What's up, Sneaky Nation? Sneaky Pete here, back with all the news after week number nine in our Columbus Aviators franchise, where the Aviators picked up another victory to improve to 6-2 and two on the season. But once again, the victory came with some losses. We saw a few big-time injuries happen in that last game, and we are going to have to check that out uh, later on in this video. And the, the real issue comes down to, obviously, with Brady Rogers going down, too, it looks like he might miss some time. We only have one quarterback on the roster, which is Matt Scott. Now, both Brady Rogers and Matt Scott looked really good against the Bengals, you know, or at least Matt Scott did. Um, but again, the, the Aviators have been pretty fortunate. Since losing Tyson Russell, we played two teams that did not have an outstanding secondary. I don't know what the Ravens secondary looks like quite yet, but I do know the Ravens are sitting at 5-3, and three, which means they are much better than the Jags or the Bengals. And this could be the first big-time test the Aviators have faced without Tyson Russell. Let's go ahead and get to scouting some players here and this is our first week to really get into the meat of the scouting try to find players that might fit this team moving forward here we go um steward here Kadron steward looking like a pretty good player probably out of our uh, draft pick range ultimately we're probably looking for some project players if i find a player that has a lot of potential that is a guy that we will likely uh look at you know I don't know how many players are going to be able to find that are going to jump right in and contribute immediately to this team we feel very comfortable with a lot of the players that we have and so um you know I say this the last few seasons too and we've still ended up finding good players for us so it is absolutely possible um ultimately though what we need to do is kind of look for some backup kind of players uh and go from there there definitely seems to be a lot of talented players early on in this draft. I'm excited to scout it further. Uh, but before we move on, let's go ahead and look at the injury report. And this is where things get serious. Avery Williamson, we know he's done for the season. Russell, we know he's done for six weeks. Chance Jokel, who just returned from injury, is out again three more weeks with a ruptured disc. And then Brady Rogers, a broken collarbone, out for six weeks. And that is devastating as all of a sudden the Aviators are on their third string quarterback. Matt Scott did look okay last game, but the competition really wasn't all that great. And he had a lot of momentum to work with. You know, when you get subbed in, you're working with adrenaline and stuff like that. A week on it and uh, who knows if he's going to come out the same player. Obviously, we need to sign at least one more quarterback, maybe two. With them both being out for six more weeks... I, I'm thinking, and it might be a risky call, but I'm thinking we are going to have to put Brady Rogers on the IR to free up a spot. Um, he would be returning with more time left in the season. However, he'd be returning the same time that we're getting Russell back. And at that point, I think we could probably move forward with Matt Scott as the backup. I don't think I can sign anybody now. Um without cutting somebody I could be wrong on this I might be able to sign one person I doubt I would be able to sign more than one is there a rookie I just kind of want to keep with the uh, younger players uh, maybe a guy with speed could work as well I did see a few names up top that I'd feel pretty comfortable with we typically like to have mobile quarterbacks so that's something we're definitely going to consider uh, so Logan Thomas would be the fastest he also has pretty good size as well. He'd probably be the cheapest quarterback we could get. If nothing else, maybe pick him up for a third string spot. And um, yeah, so I'm going to have to release one player. And depending on if I feel comfortable enough with my quarterback's health, I mean, I didn't like that Matt Scott was our only eligible quarterback. If he went down last week, we would be in a world of trouble. Um, unfortunately, we might be in a spot where I have to both release somebody as well as, as put Rodgers on the IR. Finding a player to release, though, not an easy task. I really like quite a lot of the people on this roster right now, and I don't know what the best way to go here could be. Um, I like Farrell, plus we, we play one of these guards over at center anyway. Uh, and he's a rookie that's pretty pretty good overall for a rookie. So I kind of want to hold on to him. Um, QQ, unfortunately, might be the way to go here. Didn't really want to release QQ, but I don't know what else we could do at this point. Um, 
We're just not in a position to hold on to him, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, because I, I really need to sign two quarterbacks. That was an issue last week is if Matt Scott did go down with an injury, all of a sudden we are in a world of hurt. I can't risk that. And with injuries piling up right now, it's something I got to think about. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, sign Logan Thomas here. And then I'm going to go ahead and put Brady Rogers on the IR. Again, I know it's a bit risky, um, but he's coming back the same exact time as we are getting Russell back. And that's not going to leave a whole lot of time left in the season. So I'm, I'm going to bank on Russell remaining healthy for that. Um, and on the off chance that I'm wrong, which I very well could be wrong, if he does go down with an injury, it is still going to um, allow me to have, you know, Matt Scott there. If Matt Scott goes down, I think we just need to chalk it up to this season's not going to go our way. Um, I don't want to put him on the IR, but he's going to be returning with very few weeks left in the season. I think it's probably the best move. Play it safe. Get a third quarterback just in case. And that third quarterback, I'm cool. Let's go with Jimmy Garoppolo. I was thinking Scott Tolzien, a guy that I like quite a lot, but we'll go with Garoppolo here. I still want to give Matt Scott the keys here. Um, Garoppolo might be better, and, he, and it looks like Thomas might be better as well. I don't know. I want to give Matt Scott the keys until he doesn't earn it. Note, though, any three of these guys could be our starting quarterback for the next six weeks. None of this is set in stone. Matt Scott just came to play. He looked really good for us last week, and I don't think we should demote him after having a good game, much less a come-from-behind win. I think he's earned the starting job for now. If uh, he starts to struggle, we have Garoppolo there, and I feel pretty comfortable with that. So that's where we're sitting. Let's go ahead and look at the stats from last week, and then we'll look at the Ravens lineup, and we'll call it a video there. Um, whoops, did not mean to do that. All right, awards, there we go. Weekly awards, let's check it out. And uh, Broussard, Josh Broussard, 32 of 36. My goodness, 421 passing yards, six touchdowns. Newsome for the Lions, 12 tackles, three sacks, two fumbles forced, and a fumble recovered. Brandon Marshall, again, 11 tackles, an interception, and a touchdown. Yeah, I was about to say, I thought he won it last week, too. And then Dalton Crosby for our division rival there, the uh, Texans, 30 of 49, three passing touchdowns for him. He also had 391 passing yards. All right, so let's check out the Ravens lineup again. Uh, we've won these last two games with backup quarterbacks, but they weren't the best of teams. The Ravens have a record above 500, um, and they're probably a better better competition for us. Let's see what they're working with. They do not have a great starting quarterback, though, so despite our quarterback being out, the upgrade for the Ravens is really not that much in Derek Carr, only a 78 overall. At running back, they do have Niall Davis and Centamula Woods, a guy that we are familiar with. Martin Jackson is going to be at fullback there. Uh, at wide receiver, Ben Cabrera, Javon Locke. So players that we've seen haven't really developed a whole lot for them. Um, I'm not seeing a whole lot of players on offense that really scare me. If our defense can step up and make some big-time plays, that definitely bodes well for us. Their offensive line has a few good players, but for the most part, it's average. They have two like uh, staples there, I would say. Let's see what they are working with defensively. And it's really going to come down to the secondary, I feel like. Not a great defensive line. They do have Williams there. They do have Ted Moss, though. Another good player. C.J. Mosley and Perryman. So a pretty good linebacking core for the Ravens. Here's what really counts, though. Jimmy Smith and Avion Atkins are definitely two of the best corners we have seen over these last three weeks. And um, not... A star outstanding secondary by any means, but definitely a much larger challenge for our backup quarterbacks to go up against. They also have a young free safety in Benson there, 82 overall, second year pro, and Will Hill. So definitely the best secondary that we have seen over these last three weeks. And it's going to be interesting to see how Matt Scott and the Aviators respond. You know, we do still have Curtis Harden. We do still have Sean Sutton, Wayne Chapman. Dorio Green Beckham, a lot of guys that can make some big time plays, but uh, Matt Scott's definitely going to have to find them at the right time. Otherwise, the Ravens secondary can make some big time plays against us. That is going to be it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Hit that like button if you did, and I'll see you guys in week 10 as we take on the Baltimore Ravens. Later.